Hi, accounting students. In today's lesson, we're going to look at the relationship between um, the equity transactions and the balance sheet. As we've um, kind of mentioned a little bit before, um, the balance sheet doesn't track uh, income and expenses or revenue and expenses. And so without kind of taking all those transactions into effect, we can't really balance the balance sheet on a regular basis. And that's typically why we do it kind of at only specific points in time. So um, as we said, so the, the, um, the revenue expense um, transactions and the capital and drawings expenses are tracked separately from the balance sheet. Um, and then this, so this is why we use the, the, the trial balance periodically um, is to kind of do like a kind of a running total of all the accounts um, with their debit and credit balances. And it's really kind of the only way that we can make sure that uh, our, our work is continuing to balance on an ongoing basis. And so in order to get the balance sheet to balance then, um, every once in a while we have to sort of adjust the capital account. We have to kind of do the math on our revenue expenses, um, investments and drawings transactions and to figure out what the end of uh, process change is from all those and then factor that into the capital section of the balance sheet. Uh, technically, this is called the expanded equity section. Um, so far, we have had literally only one line for our uh, capital account on the uh, balance sheet. Uh, there is another way of, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. Uh, sometimes there's a statement of owner's equity where we, um, we, we kind of do the math and, and show what the change is or we can use what's called an expanded equity section on the balance sheet and do the math right there on the balance sheet. Uh, this is typically done periodically and what that means is with, with um, like once in a while with a regular uh, process um, and usually done annually. Uh, it's kind of a lot of work to do it um, more often. Although these days with computers, obviously we can, we can do it more often. It just, um, is a bit of a big deal still. Uh, we will be learning how to do all this as part of what's called the closing process and it happens at the end of the fiscal year. So there are basically uh, two scenarios that we have to be able to kind of account for. Um, one is wherein the final capital balance increases. So we have some kind of a combination where um, investment and or profit are greater uh, than uh, expenses and withdrawals. And then we have the flip side where the final capital balance decreases, uh, again, because of some combination of greater expenses or greater withdrawals. So this is kind of the basic um, math uh, formula for the lack of a better word. I know it doesn't look very neat and tidy. But basically what we do is we start with the beginning capital from the beginning of the fiscal year. And then we're going to take into account the totals of our work from our, our uh, other capital accounts, so expenses, revenue, investment, and drawings. So we take the beginning capital. We are going to, and, and we can only do one of these two things. We can either add the net income or subtract the net loss. You can't have both. You've either made a profit or a loss. I mean, technically, you could have neither, I guess, or it would be zero but you can't have both net income and net loss. You have to either add income, or if you've had a net loss, you're gonna subtract that off. Now with investments and drawings, technically you can have both. Uh, the owner can have made some investments over the course of the year, uh, and they may have made some drawings as well over the course of the year. So if there's investments, you're gonna show those as an add. If there are drawings, you're gonna show those as a subtraction. And this is going to provide you with your ending capital balance. This formula, this general process of starting with a beginning number, adjusting for activity and ending with a final number is a very common practice in accounting. And you're gonna see this come back um, to haunt you a little bit in uh, future lessons. All right, so this is kind of the layout. And you'll notice um, that we have, we always kind of use three columns. And the layout and the language and what's going on is very, very specific. Um, so for instance, here we have uh, EBOA capital. Um, and so this is kind of the capital account that we're adjusting. Uh, we're keeping it very simple. We're doing a lot of sole proprietorship stuff. If this was, for instance, a partnership, 
you could have two or three or a hundred of these depending on how many partners you had. So we begin with our beginning balance on the first day of the fiscal year. This is not a calendar year just because it's January 1st. Um, this is for a fiscal year. And this person, um, Bo EBOA, has 21878 in uh, capital already invested. We have recognized a net income of uh, $8,209. $8, $8, so we're going to add that in. We have uh, drawings of 3950 So we're going to do the math, and that means that we've got a change in equity of 4259 What's important to recognize is that the positive number is bigger than the negative number. Because of the income, it was greater than the drawings. We've had an increase in capital. And again, the, the brackets are kind of secret um, accountant code to indicate uh, a subtraction. So we started with our beginning balance of 21,000. We have now added 4,259 for an ending balance of $26,137. Down below here, then, we would then put in the total of this number plus our total liabilities to get the total of our uh, liabilities and our equity. A different investment then, or a different scenario then, is where we have um, additional investments. Um, so again, the layout is going to be a little bit different. Um, and so here we start out with our opening balance. And then we add in right away um, the uh, $30,000 that EVOA made in um, new investments. Um, and again, as I said before, you can have a scenario where um, you have both investment and a drawings, which is what we have here. Please notice the wording. So we have this plus that we're adding in. Um, also notice the indentation. So um, typically, uh, there, this is what's called kind of a nested design. So you have um, kind of certain numbers here. You have a little bit of math that's going on here to get a total in the middle and then the back out to the, um, to the far column for the final total. Um, typically, I kind of refer this as to like a list column. This is like a math column kind of sometimes. And then we have our final totals column up here. Um, probably not a very good technical um, uh, kind of explanation of the three columns, but it, it helps a little bit. And so again, we're going to take our additional uh, investment. We're going to add uh, or be prepared to add that. We have to do a little side work here. So we're going to take our net income. We're going to subtract our drawings. So that's kind of our change in capital plus the 30,000 in additional investments. And so our new capital is balance is going to be 80,600. So 47 plus 30 plus 3605. Um, here we have a scenario where uh, we have expenses greater than revenue, um, which is going to result in a net loss. And so here you'll see, again, we're doing a little bit of side work. Um, we are taking our existing loss plus the owner took out drawings, which they're allowed to do whether they make money or not. Um, and so we're going to have an overall decrease in capital. Again, noticing we're using the brackets to denote negatives, right? Typically, I don't like using um, dollar signs. This is all in dollar values. Um, they show that in the textbook, and you'll notice that only the first number in each column is how is showing it. Here, it doesn't. It's not there because um, there are numbers up here above um, in the liability section, so it's not actually the first number in that column. But that's why these have dollar signs. And then the last one we're looking at is um, where we have drawings greater than that income. I'm not going to go into great detail, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, here we have um, a net income of only about 10600 and we've put in drawings, um, or we're taking out drawings of greater than that. And so we have, um, we have an increase, or we have our opening balance. And even though we have net income, we are showing uh, the capital as decreasing by 4,775 for our final total. And that is the end of this lesson.